in my last video in a, in one of my last videos rather i went ahead and showed you how to use shodan to go ahead and find uh, servers that have port number 445 that's smb port open to exploit eternal blue and eternal synergy and i used the shodan search engine at that point of time i did not go ahead and get, give you the scripting because i thought that it was too dangerous but once again i'm a believer in open source intelligence so i am going ahead and making this particular tutorial to teach you how you can go ahead and do some shodan scripting to find any damn vulnerable machine on the system and exploit it or use it that's up to you now to start off with you will have to go ahead and register to shodan so you'll have to go to shodan.io use a valid email address and choose a username my username is hashtag captain underscore nemo same with uh, github and then you'll get a api key all right now that api key is required for shodan uh, command line installation now there are two ways in which you can go and use shodan you can use shodan from here from the web console and from the cli my experience says that the cli is way better so i'll go ahead and show you how to go ahead and install that cli the first step is easy underscore install shodan that will go ahead and install the shodan libraries on your system these are python libraries that interact with the background database of shodan and then you'll have to do a shodan underscore u uh, easy install underscore u that's uh, and then you'll have to go ahead and put your API key that's Shodan in it that's initializing your account your API key like you'll get an API key alpha alphanumeric API key and a QR code save that save that to a, some safe place right because you don't get to register to Shodan all the time now let's get back to the tutorial here I have Shodan installed, so I'll not go ahead and install Shodan. The commands are very easy. Easy underscore install Shodan. That's like, you know, if you're running a Shodan Python library and you want to upgrade it. Once that is installed, you'll have to go ahead and do a hyphen u Shodan. Easy underscore install hyphen u Shodan. And then that would make the system ready for your API key. Now at that point of time, you'll have to use the Shodan command. At this point of time, you are ready to use Shodan. You'll have to go ahead and initialize your account or rather make your machine familiar with Shodan. It'll make a folder, hidden folder under your root called .shodan. It'll have an api.txt file and you'll have your API key there. Once you fire this command, right? Now let's go to uh, the command line and let me just go and show you some of the commands. Now the first command is shodan my IP. Shodan my IP would go ahead and give you my give you your IP like your service provider's IP. I'm not running a VPN right now, so I'll not go ahead and run that command. I don't want to go ahead and expose myself for security purposes. this is a command that you have to run here now I was previously going through some of the commands uh, let me just go ahead and run these commands now the first one is that I ran was to count the number of Apache servers that Shodan has indexed right so it might take a while let's give it some time now we see that there are these many Apache servers in the well not in the world but pretty much 80 percent of the planet there are this many apache servers now let's have a look at uh, ta -ta -ta, how many apache 2 servers i don't get, i think that it will be a bit lesser because apache 2 is not used that much so, yeah it's lesser so let's have a look at some nginx servers shall we now i assume that nginx would be a bit more because it's a rising server like the rising server technology and i think there are some 17,000 something 
I'm not sure like here yeah, 18 yeah the, this many servers are there in the showdown database now these are the counts right now you can download this as well I will not go ahead and do the download but what you have to do is like you'll have to just go ahead and do a download and you'll have to go ahead and mention a file name let's say ngi and x dot gz I think I put the format wrong because the file name should go first if I remember correctly and then a batch shape 2 let's see yes I got the format wrong I'm sorry about that my bad happens at times and it went ahead and see the results if I do ls pipe grip start dot gz uh, sorry I'm looking to scroll and do the this thing as well I think I should be getting this. There we go. File. And that's my file, and the size is this much bytes. So the uh, command would be download, and then the name of the download file, and then your target, right? Keep that in mind. Now moving on. I did a count. Now let me just go ahead and move into something more intrinsic, alright? Let's go ahead and yeah, let's go ahead and do a host search. So I've got this particular IP address. I want to know what this IP address is, right? So I'll do a showdown host and this IP address. And as you can see, it has got a heartbleed vulnerability. On a port 443. Now, if you remember what hard bleed is, I don't have to go ahead and remind you. <laughs> All right. So moving on. Now, this part. This is pretty interesting. What I'm doing here is I'm doing a search and I am going ahead and specifying the IP address, the port name, and the organization name. And I am using a separator as a comma. So it is basically a CSV file and I'm looking for an Apache 2 server. So if I hit enter, it should go ahead and give me the Apache 2 servers in a CSV format. As we see here, it's a CSV format. And you can use the up arrow key or the down arrow key to go ahead and navigate that. You can pipe that to a file as well if you want to. It's completely up to you. Q. Right, so I found the file, so. an ASCII text so if I go ahead and do a cat a cat to CSV there we go we have got the file clear pretty cool eh right so moving on let's do something more interesting I want to go ahead and find out and yeah, all right, fine. Uh, I forgot to mention the limit switch. You can go ahead and use the limit switch to limit your count if you don't want that many results. But who wants small amount of results? We all want unlimited results. Right, so now this is interesting. Now, if you remember one year back, there was a RDDoS attack. RDDoS is basically a reflective DDoS. It has got... Uh, Memcached has got a 52,000 amplification factor 
and memcache runs on port number 11211 like the memcached server so if I send a byte to that particular server a forged byte like a forged packet with the forged sender IP and recipient IP what it'll do is like instead of sending the reply back to me it will go and send the reply back to my target my DDoS target All right that's reflective DDoS like it hits the memcached server and reflects it to my target and the, refle the reflection uh, amplification factor is 52,000 times so one byte would yield 52,000 bytes so if you put 10 bytes it would yield 52,000 cross 10 bytes so you can understand like it took github down for seven hours look it up so we can see here that this particular server has port open port 11211 that's a memcache port open uh, let me see which all are memcache ports open this one has got memcache port open and this one has got memcache port open all right that's really scary like three servers on uh, shodan has got memcached open like that can be used real bad in the wrong hands now let me just go ahead and do a search for any open SMTP servers uh, that can be used as a you know uh, open relay cause port number 25 generally has open relay open, like enabled like SMTP works on two ports 25 and 587 like that's ESMTP so let's go ahead and do a search here and as I see here it has listed quite a few servers with port number 25 open this one has got port 587 that's obviously an ESMTP server and that doesn't really matter if it's a you know a Microsoft Exchange server or a SendMail server you can go and do a telnet and check and see if port number 25 is open or not and if open relay is enabled if open relay is enabled you can go ahead and use that as your own personal mailer all right moving on let me see if there are any uh, servers with port number 23 open uh, I doubt that port number 23 would be open like it would go ahead and show any results no I don't think so so I'll just hit a quit and I'll do a telnet dot option port 23 all right it did not find any results so I'll just do a colon here let's see it might throw an error because I have not upgraded uh, yeah there we go I'll have to upgrade my plan for this particular filter but this filter works and it would go and give me pretty much all the port 23 opens that are out there so let me just go and do something all right let me just do a search 23 let's see what I get I'll get a raw data now that did not yield any results either it seems that I'll have to go ahead and seriously upgrade my uh, you know my API plan but anyways like I hope that this particular tutorial was helpful in making you understand how Shodan scripting works it's not rocket science you'll just have to go ahead and use your imagination and you'll have to know what the vulnerabilities are you know to be a good pen tester you'll have to know what's new in the market what's vulnerable in the market if a new OS comes out download that OS and throw everything at it throw the kitchen sink at it all right and see what happens see what gives and then go ahead and go to bug bounty or hacker one and then go ahead and collect your bounty if you have gone ahead and found any bugs having said that this is James again from hackathon and do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification icon to stay updated on my latest uploads and I am giving out free CEH10 
tutorial packs so let me know in the comments if you need them once again have a good day evening and night wherever you are god bless bye bye